Hi, this is Mike with Enterprise Tax, giving some additional guidelines on the uh, Paycheck Protection Program. Uh, that's the um, uh, program that was launched by the United States government to um, help out companies, small businesses, especially who have been impacted um, by the uh, coronavirus in terms of having to lay off you know, workers. And what the government is trying to do is ensure uh, that um, those companies have enough funds to keep those workers employed, at least for uh, you know a specific uh, time period, not indefinite, but at least for the short term. And so what happened in the past was uh, when the government initially um, rolled out the, the, the funding, it, it ran out pretty quickly. The reason why it ran out was because a lot uh, bigger companies, uh, you know, were applying for the funding and were getting approved. Um, we're talking two, three, four million dollars. And, uh, you know, the end result of that was that the smaller companies uh, did not get have access uh, to that funding. And um, so, you know, it, it caused quite a, I guess, what you would call a public relations nightmare for both the government and those big companies, because in a lot of those cases, the bigger companies had access to other funds, which they could tap into. And the logic is, why would they tap into the monies that have been made available by the government for you know everyone um, when they could tap into these other funding sources that they had? Uh, there was one instance uh, with one company, I won't mention any names, who had uh, done, uh, I guess, uh, gotten some kind of uh, venture capital funding in, in the millions just weeks prior and then they now applied for the Paycheck Protection Program and they, and they got it. In the meantime, other smaller companies um, were either denied or by the time they went through, through the process of applying, um, they were told that the funds had, had run out uh, by the um, SBA. Um, so obviously this wasn't a good thing. And so the government went ahead and uh, together with the SBA, they did a second round of funding, um, which apparently there's still money in the second round of funding. What's been happening is that some of those bigger companies have started giving back <laughs> some of the monies or the monies that they got, either for, for a couple of reasons. One is there's that they didn't want the public relations uh, nightmare. There was too much scrutiny. You know, people are now realizing and saying, well, why are they getting this money or why are they taking it when they have other sources of funding? Um, and then the other thing is that the government has said that they will audit these companies. They will, there will be an audit trail. They will be required to show that they used the monies for what it was intended for. Uh, the way the government has it laid out is this, and it's not entirely too clear. <clears throat> but what they've said is this, you have to use the funds to either pay for payroll or you need to use the funds to uh, pay for either your mortgage, business mortgage, that is. Um, or paying your business rent, or you would have to prove um, that the funds were used for any other scenario which helped you stay afloat um, during the um, you know during the time frame uh, that's that that's the funding is supposed to be required for. Okay. So I know that didn't come out too too um, um, coherent, but I you know you. Most of you will understand what I mean by that, okay? So, um, what I am advising anyone who asks me, as someone who's in the financial service uh, industry, um, is this. If you do get approved for the funding, I would say put it in a separate account. Make sure you do not uh, commingle um, these monies. And make sure you have a very, very, very detailed audit trail of what the money is used for. The only way the funding becomes forgivable is if you're able to prove, you know, and who knows when the government's gonna do this, whatever audits they're gonna do. If you're able to prove that, they use, that you use the funds, okay, for exactly what the government said the funds should be used for. Okay, if the SBA is able to um, um, show and, you know, or if you're able to show the, the SBA or the government, whoever does the audit, that the funds were used for that, then they will become um, for, forgivable. If not, um, there's one or two things. The government could say that you were not truthful in what you were saying you were going to use the funds for because you do have to certify 
um, that these are these funds are going to be used for that those specific purposes. Um, you do have to certify and sign for that. Uh, and if the government determines that, then you could be prosecuted. Um, there is a case of someone now in Atlanta who's actually being prosecuted by the Justice Department for not using the funds or for falsely, um, uh, I guess, stating on, on the affidavit uh, that he would use the funds for what they were supposed to be used for. And he ended, he ended up uh, apparently, well, not, this has not been proven, but apparently spending it on personal expenses, like buying a Rolls Royce and, and, and the 40,000 you know, gift or whatever. Um, so, you know, that's extremely important. Uh, my advice, again, is ensure that the funds are placed in a separate account and ensure that you have a very, very, very detailed audit trail of everything and anything those funds are used for. Remember, when you're signing off for, those, for, those, for, that, for the funding, it's actually a loan to start off with. Okay, It becomes um, a forgivable grant when it's proven that you have used the funds for what they're supposed to be used for. So, you know, bear that in, in, in mind. But in, in closing, I just want everybody to know um, that there's still funds available. Apparently, from what the SBA was saying last week, they've only gone through about 60 or 65 percent of the funds. And the reason for that is that a lot of companies are a little bit skeptical about taking the money. Um, there is some ambiguity about, um, you know, in terms of the guidelines, what the money is supposed to be used for, how is the government going to do their auditing as to how the, the, the money is used. Uh, and so some companies are saying, you know what, maybe I want to skip this. Maybe I just don't want the hassle of the government coming in and poking in and looking into my accounts and so on and so forth. Uh, the government has tried to soothe people's fears by saying that only amounts over $2 million will be audited. Uh, and at some stage, I think they said it, 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 that might even be lower. So they've tried to calm people's uh, fears because they do want companies to use this money to pay uh, employees. Um, I would personally think it's a little bit selfish if companies decide just because they don't want closer scrutiny, then they're going to lay off workers. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, we want workers to be kept on the payroll. We want people to be kept working. Um, and so, you know, if the government has to look into your, your well, first of all, your books should be in good shape anyways. Um, so that's another, that's another thing altogether. But again, uh, there is money out there. Uh, and so um, if you're in a position where you need to, um, apply, please do go ahead and, and apply. Uh, another thing is this, independent contractors, real estate agents, um, Uber drivers, you are eligible for the Paycheck Protection Program. However, there is a caveat. Uh, you cannot have made more than 100,000, okay? And so when you, if you're doing the application, just, uh, you know, if you did, you know, your limit is 100,000 in terms of your earnings. And on your Schedule C, uh, you probably probably will not qualify if you had a net loss. You see, the logic is this. If you had a net loss, then the, the logic is that you were not able to pay yourself because you lost money, okay? So that's the logic there. Um, but if you have a net profit and you were an independent contractor, then, you know, the probability is that you were able to pay yourself. So in other words, what you would do in such a case is, um, Divide your profit into the 12 months. Say, let's say you made 20,000 in profit. So divide that in, by, into 12 months, and then you would times that by 2.5. That would give you the amount that you should be eligible for. Remember, a lot of this is still in the air. So I'm just giving the broad guidelines from my understanding of how this all works. But again, enterprise tax, if you have any questions, give us a call. Uh, send me an email, Mike Abby, M I K E A B I I, at moneytaxrefund.com, or visit our website at www.moneytaxrefund.com. Hoping everybody stays safe. Wishing you a, a, a blessed, um, you know, period through all this. And um, um, you know, I appreciate you uh, uh, listening to me. Thanks and goodbye.